take a look. This is Larry King, the girlfriend of the special needs child, the boyfriend of the special needs child who is being placed in the back of this car. This is where she would remain for hours and die as it turned hot inside that car. That's Larry King doing that. And I'm wondering what possible explanation could there be for this? Because they're not going anywhere. The car remains there hour after hour after hour after hour while these two are inside the house at times fighting, at times having sex. They start some heavy petting on the, on the porch. We're not going to show that to you again tonight. But what is the reasonable, is there any explanation for that? Well, amazingly, today, that man, Larry King, took the witness stand because he's a defendant in this case as well, charged with the murder of that child, and gave his explanation as to what exactly was going on that day, why they did what they did, why he did what he did. Let's take a listen. And when you got up in the morning, did you and Miss, you and the other defendant have a conversation which led to what we saw on the porch, that is you carrying the child out? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Tell the ladies and gentlemen what that, con you, I, I don't want you quoting it, but just tell them what the conversation yes, was sir. about. Just about her being involved with somebody else, and um, we had talked about it, and some things broke my heart, and I just uh, asked her to leave. And All right. So it was about basically what you would call infidelity. Is that right? Yes, sir. And did she agree to leave? Yes, sir. Okay, and then what happened next? I put a child in the car. All right. We well, say you put the child in the car. Do you, did you carry her out? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. And why were you the one to carry her out? Uh, Rita has uh, an extra kidney or has a lot of trouble, health trouble, and her daughter was getting heavy for her, and so she asked me to carry her. Okay. And thinking back, and I know you say you hadn't watched that tape, but thinking back, would there have been anything inappropriate, wrong, or rough about the way you would have treated that little disabled girl? Man, absolutely not. Never. Can you imagine a circumstance where that would be your reaction? No, sir. Okay. So you stated you carried the child out, and we've seen the tape. Um, placed her in whose car? Rita's car. Okay. And where did you put her in the car, if you recall? In the, behind the driver's seat, on the driver's side, in the rear. Okay. And you, you stepped away then? Did Mom come and, like, get her settled or seat belt or something like that? I think so, yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, think carefully. Well, if you need to. Was the car running when you put the little girl in? Absolutely. If somebody told you they watched that tape and you and Rita had a conversation in the yard after that child was put in the car, is that something you would deny or something you'd just say, I don't recall it? No, that's, I, I remember. Okay, well, tell, I'm asking you about that conversation. Asking her, I just asked her to leave and, um, Told her I'd call her later. That's, that's all I asked. Okay. And did she, in fact, get in the car and leave? Um, I didn't know, sir. Excuse me? No, sir. Okay. What did happen? Um, she followed me back inside. Um, what were y'all talking about at that? You'd ask her to leave. She didn't leave. What were y'all, what, what was going on between you? Um, she was just trying to plead with me and talk to me and um, just trying to make things right. Okay. And did y'all talk back and forth about it? A little bit, yes, sir. Okay, you said you had your feelings hurt? Yeah. Well, you said she's heartbroken. Oh, yeah. Okay. And while y'all was in the house, we just put the cards on the table. Did, did you make up? We did. Okay, and you decided to move on? Yes, sir. At some point in time, did Miss, did, did the defendant at our at a other counsel table, did she attempt to leave? Um, yes, sir. Okay. And what happened when she tried to leave? She came back in and told me her keys were locked in her car. Said the keys were locked in the car? Yes, sir. Do you recall what you did to try to get into the car? Some of it, yes, sir. What did you do? Um, I tried to uh, get in. I think I tried to pry the door. Um, uh, I tried to I offered to knock out the sunroof, but... Rita didn't want me to do that. Did y'all then come up with a, uh, a different plan? Yes, sir. 
And what was that? She said she had a spare key at her home. Okay, and were you at this point just done with the operation, or do you continue to try to help? I continued to try to help. And what did you do to try to help? Um, I went and took her to get another uh, spare key. Okay, and when you left, was the engine running? Yes, sir. And was it running when you got back? Yes, sir. And did you think that AC was on? Yes, sir. When you got back and you had that key fob, and did y'all retrieve a key fob? She did. Okay. And when y'all got back, were you able to pop the, uh, and just pull up with the key fob? That solved the problem. Did you pull up, hit the fob, and unlock the door? No, sir. Why not? I think the batteries were weak in it. It wasn't, it wasn't working. Okay. It wouldn't unlock the door. So y'all hit it, hit it, hit it, unlock, yeah. unlock, and it wouldn't unlock it? Yes, sir. Were you eventually able to unlock the car? Yes, sir, I did. And it wasn't with that key fob? No, sir. It's just old-fashioned, stick it in and turn it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And I, I'm not going to ask you to describe what you saw when you got in the car. People saw that on the, uh, the video and in the pictures themselves. But uh, when the child got out, or the child was, was taken from the car and you knew she was deceased, what was your immediate reaction? Call 911. Okay, that's the explanation. And the question is, is it reasonable? Does it make sense? This is a murder case. These are murder charges. Is it a defense for him? Is it a defense for her? Is it a defense for neither of them? Let's not forget, it's five hours in the car. But he's saying the engine's running. We assume the air conditioning was still working. It obviously wasn't. Let's bring back in our think tank. Daryl Cohen, Meg Strickland, Josh Schiffer. My that question is, how large is the house? So he may have had a reasonable explanation for 10 or 15 minutes. He didn't want her to hear the argument. But after 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, five hours, there is no explanation, in my view, that explains that type of conduct. I'm with Daryl on this one because I'm sitting here trying. Ever since I've heard the story, I'm, I'm trying to think as a defense lawyer. I'm thinking, is there anything that I could hang my hook on, on that testimony? To say, okay, he's, he's not, he, he was caring, he's not a bad guy. But the key thing at the very end, they finally call 911. I mean, forget the brick part, you know, throwing a brick in to open the window. That's A. Is that well, he, he testified that he suggested smashing the sunroof, and she said no. Who cares? It's a damn, sorry, it's a kid. Oh, I care. It's a kid. <laughs> I no, care. it's a kid. Yeah, you break the, window. Yeah. break the window. No, you don't. You don't want to ruin the car to save a child. Well, obviously, apparently not. That's my new ringtone. But they need to call 911 if they're afraid to not handle the car How properly. significant is, is this alleged fact by them that the car's running? The air conditioner was on. We never, listen, ever thought the air conditioner was listen, cut off. Th that's one that really kills me because a Tesla has like a dog mode that you can put the dog mode on. I'm talking about a dog. And so you put the dog mode on and, and it definitely keeps the temperature so the dog will not melt in Atlanta heat, okay? These cars where it's a combustible engine, gosh knows what will happen to that AC. So the fact that they're saying, oh, it's running, we know the AC is going to run for five hours. So there's lots of reasons why it wouldn't keep working, you call 911. This exactly. remains a murder and, case? And, and, and yes, I'm not, I'm not yes. one of them fancy Tesla lawyers. I'm an old fashioned country man. Um, let me tell you exactly what we've got going on here. We have a bad agreement between two people who did something awful. They've made an off the books agreement if for a joint defense and they're trying to lie, cheat and steal their way to some sort of acquittal because this behavior is absolutely indefensible. It's a, it is the most helpless kind of victim. It is a disabled child. There is no excuse for not breaking a window immediately. I don't care what the deductible is. You pick up a rock and you break it. Let's, let's, let's walk through this. So initially his story is that she's going to leave. Then, because they had a fight, she's going to leave. They put the child in the car first, engine's running. Then they start to make up and make out. Is that the point where, okay, that's we're not leaving, we've got to take Christina out of the that's car? That's one of the points. Yeah. I get it. I don't want my child, disabled or not, to hear the argument. Yep. Or, or but that goes away. And especially, whatever time they decided they were going to make love, lovey-dovey again, then... I think they, they had sex. I don't think they were making love. Yeah. <laughs> but lovey-dovey. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Maybe they were exercising. 
Gotcha. But, but no matter what, it's that's, inexcusable. That part you could almost excuse that they put the, they were having a fight and then they went into the lovey dovey whatever. Those 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, I could find that being a rational way to get out of this. I don't murder. understand how it got to five hours. Okay, yeah, that's point. exactly it. Therein D lies the problem. I I'll give you the 30 yes, minutes. Yes. I'll give you the 30 minutes. And guess what? It's probably not that great to do that for 30 minutes. Five hours, any child is defecated all over themselves. Mm. There's a mess. There's food issue. Five hours of not feeding a child. Anybody that's had kids knows you have to feed them more than once every five hours. You can't miss the side effects if you don't. But if you're not, if you're making love, I mean, absolutely, you just push that child aside. I don't think they meant to kill her, but the fact that she died. So that makes it, it not a murder case. It. Mm. I, I think you can infer no, from what they did, the or more importantly, what they didn't do. You could infer this is a murder case. This is just it, horrible. No, it's bad. They need to go and to prison because of just how horrible. And then him being the way he was on the stand, yeah. I found that to be. I'm wrong I'm really as well. wondering if the trial is due to what kind of Daryl's referencing, which is what charge would they plead to, and whether it's an argument over voluntary versus involuntary oh, yeah. versus yeah. manslaughter yeah. versus. This murder. case not over by any means. She is going to testify later this week. We believe Friday morning. Of course, we'll stay on top of that.